Hello there, my fellow miners and crafters. Good times. Little Scar here, bringing you another super Rasa awesome Minecraft episode. And in today's episode, we return to our bridge project here, where we're connecting the fishing cabin project to the Greater Scarland area. And as you can see, there is one completed bridge and one being worked on right now. So let's get this episode underway. All right, and welcome down to the mainland of Scarland. And we're over here in the Crystal Cave. We haven't been down here for a little while, taking a look at all these wonderful crystals down here. We've got to go on a boat ride. We should do that after uh, we finish up. We should go on a little boat ride around and uh, take a look at some of the landscaping I've done around the, uh, the house lately. So that might be kind of fun. So in our previous episode, we'd worked on this bridge right here. So this is kind of a rope swing bridge, kind of inspired by uh, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. So we've got this all kind of built up here looking super snazzy. And um, I think I made a slight modification. Yes, I did. So let me show you what I did. Um, whereas this pole, kind of this one that stuck up a little higher was right here. I kind of reversed them and then I added that simple little piece of carpet on the ends, which I think makes a really cool end cap for it. Look at that. Isn't that kind of cool? Um, yeah, so uh, that's the only real change I've made, I think, since our last episode. And as you can see down on the banks down there, I've added cores dirt. I don't know if I've pointed this out, but adding cores dirt down there next to the sand as it kind of transitions up into the bank, it looks nice. It looks like, you know, it's like eroding there where the grass doesn't have time to grow, whereas it's kind of, you know, the water's washed on it, it's eroded down a little bit. I think it adds an extra kind of layer of detail to the landscape. All right, so let's get Oh, hello, skeleton. You know what's funny? I've seen multiple skeletons in that little corner right there. A guy just a moment ago, he had a whole suit on of uh, leather armor. I took him down, but uh, yeah, they like to hide in that little spot. <laughs> All right, so this is our project for today. As you can see, I have laid out the pillars for the bridge. So, so we're not floundering around in the water for 10 minutes trying to measure out things. So this is kind of the dimensions we have a little bit. So these are our start, and it's about six to there, and then it's five, and then it's three, and then it's five once again, and then, uh, you know, so forth going down that way. So that's the dimensions there, and um, yeah, so let's get started. So we're going to remove this guy, and then we are going to go up four. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. There we go. Wonderful. And then we'll do the same right here. So we'll jump up here, and voila. All right, so now we're gonna go over to this one, and then we're going to go six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Awesome. And fly on over here, and then we're gonna do seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Awesome. And then this will be eight. So this is kind of uh, the idea, at least, that I have for this. So we'll start over about right about there, and then we'll kind of have it taper up and then kind of taper down, and then we'll do a nice little cave going through here, and an additional cave going up there. Now, my plan was to do a live stream where uh, we did that, and I still plan on doing that. It's just I haven't quite uh, been uh, feeling well enough to do those. Ooh, I almost fell off. So that will happen. That will happen, so don't worry. I will get to uh, those live. Ooh, missed my pillar. I will get to those live streams. I recently put an order for some monitors, so it'll be a little easier to... Uh, you know, stream, be able to interact with the chat and different things like that, having it on a separate monitor. So that'll be uh, that'll be pretty darn cool when that uh, that hopefully arrives soon. It'll also allow me to finally stream some stuff off my PlayStation. So that'll be pretty cool. All right, so I believe this is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. Yeah, so before I wasn't able to stream off of my uh, PlayStation because I only have one monitor, and if you fill the screen and then you wouldn't have access to the controls, that was a whole kind of disaster. But now I will be able to, and that is pretty cool. Okay, so this one, I believe, is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And... Let me go from here is four. One, two, three, four. Whoop, whoop, that's four. There we go, one, two, three, four. Awesome. Well, there we go. So we got our first layer of our pillars down. Let me do this other side and I'll be right back. All right, welcome back. So I added some little bridges here so we'll be able to get across the water and I started to work on this. So let's go over there and take a little closer look at this. So these are kind of the base for our walkway. So the walkway that will go in the center. So let's work on that now. 
So, whoop, oh, hey, oh, that's that's dark chocolate. We don't want that. We want milk chocolate. There we go. I'm partial to milk chocolate. What do you What do you guys like? Uh, what, what is your favorite, uh, dark chocolate or milk chocolate? I'm not talking about the colors of the of the woods, but uh, just in you know general, uh, which chocolate do you guys uh, prefer? I've always been a milk chocolate guy, whereas most of my family has always been a uh, uh, dark chocolate. Yeah, I don't know. I like the kind of the um, I guess the sweeter taste of a milk chocolate a little bit than the, um, let's see, let me get this guy up here. There we go. Got to make a big jump for that one. There we go. Then the almost kind of bitterish that the uh, the dark chocolate has. But let me know. Let me know. Which one do you guys like? Which one do you prefer? All right. There we go. And I like a white chocolate, but just in like small quantities. Like, you know, just like a, like a bite or two is really good, but too much. Never that great. It always makes my stomach you know, feel kind of sick. There we go. Awesome. Wonderful. Well, there we go. Look at this. We're we're getting there. We're getting there. This is awesome. Okay. So I like to kind of make sure this base area is really lined up and make sure I, you know, I get all the dimensions perfect and so we don't have to do it over again because that's never fun. So it looks like for the most part here, we've got this pretty well lined up. It's like when we start anything, you know, a big a big build or uh, like a house or something. I always mention you really got to got to get those details down first you know get those uh those dimensions you know perfect locked down and then you don't have to go back you know back in the day when i was learning how to build and stuff like that i was constantly having to go back and change things over and over because you know this was off by one or two but that still happens you know we make mistakes once in a while you know we do but uh, it's always good to make sure you uh double check all those things and to really do your diligence in the beginning so you can have fun you know relax a little bit have fun building because that's what it's all about that is what it's all about oh i see something did you see it yep there he is it's bob the building creeper inspector now you stay up there bob and don't even think about coming down here <laughs> crazy guy speaking of bob we need to work on our cat defense force because since the you know the 1.8 update we have not had any of our cats you know being able to be used for their jobs what they're intended for you know warding off the creepers and uh we need to work on that we, we very much need to work on that and getting that sorted away um i've had two people now tell me they had a solution for the 1.8 problem where when 1.8 was incorporated into Minecraft, they, um, they made it so cats don't recognize you, the player, anymore. At least it did in Scarland. Um, I don't know if that's happened to everybody. And I've asked a few times if anybody had any solutions, maybe, to uh, fix it. And I've had two people tell me they had a solution, but they didn't tell me how to do it. So if you guys know, if you guys know how to do it, definitely let me know. You can let me know by, via Twitter. I'll definitely see that um, easier than on the YouTube messages. But I'll definitely check through all, make sure I check through all the YouTube messages too. But direct contact is best through the Twitter. All right, there we go. And I'll have a link down in the description for my Twitter. If you guys have a solution, definitely let me know. All right, there we go. Good, I always have a little extra dark chocolate on me. There we go. And let's move down to here. Oh, wait. Have I made a mistake is the question. Let me see. Um, no, I don't think so. But yeah, like I was saying, we need to get the cabin defense force going again because I would like to get them kind of arranged around the fishing cabin and on some of the bridges so there's no creepers walking up and down the bridges and uh, catch us unexpected, you know, in a state of un undefense. I don't know. Is that a word? Can that be a word? Can I call it now that? <laughs> undefense? <laughs> uh... Making up words, making bridges and making up words that really don't make any sense. That's that's why we all come to Scar every Saturday morning to watch some uh, Scarland videos. <laughs> oh, there we go. Awesome. There we go. We got our uh, base down. Walkway is built looking super snazzy. All right. Awesome. Let's take a quick look from a distance, see how we're doing. Awesome. I love it. I love it. And I love making these bridges. These are super fun. We haven't made any bridges for a while and uh, these are super cool. So we got lots more details to put on here, but give me a couple of seconds here to kind of catch my breath and I'll be right back. 
All right, and welcome back. So I was playing around over here a little bit, um, trying to find a way of doing a little bit more decorative bottom to the bridge. So I decided to take a block of uh, dark oak across here and run it across here. And I think that looks pretty good from below. And then as we could travel over here, you could see then I add a row of milk chocolate down below like so. I think that's a good uh, way of trying to maybe beef up the bridge just a little bit, make it a little bit thicker. So let's move over to here and uh, we'll get started here. So let's do it over here. There we go. And hopefully we can reach. Hopefully we can reach. There we go. Get that up there and see how we can kind of incorporate this into it. So I need to bring it a little closer. There we go. And let's just fill that in like so. Oh, awesome. I like it. I like it a lot. There we go. And then let's see here. Yes, we need another row across here. And then how do I do that again? Oh, yeah. And then this across here. Awesome. Perfect. Okay. And then we'll fly on over here and do the same. There we go. Get that in there. Yeah, I think this will look nice. We'll also have some pretty cool um, rails that we're going to put on. Let's see. We're actually dropping down. Let's see. How am I going to incorporate this here? Do I need to do a whole row like that? Hmm, that's too much. That is too much. Huh, what did we do wrong here? Back that off. And then let's see. Cut that off one more time. Go up here. Oh, no, that's that's right. We just did that and I didn't even realize it. Oh, my bad. My bad. Okay. We might actually need to go back to our box over there and get some additional dark. Oh, yes, we do. Yes, we do. So let's head over there. So I was on the Netflix and uh, I found a really cool documentary that I think you guys might enjoy also. And it's called Print the Legend. Now it's done by Netflix. And you know, I found that if you see a documentary or really anything done by Netflix itself, you know it's high quality. So Print the Legend is of 3D printer startups and uh, their kind of struggles on trying to uh, make it in the market and different things like that. And I found it to be an extraordinary um, uh, documentary. Not only that I really enjoy, do we do that again? I made that mistake again. I cannot believe I did that again. But like I was saying, um, I found it to be an extraordinary documentary, not only for the aspects of 3D printing and different things like that, and how that's kind of going to revolutionize a lot of stuff, but the uh, the way people get when they get power. And uh, I, I found that fascinating more than any of the other aspects of the documentary. It was more about people and the way they change when they've gotten money, power, and different things like that. And uh, I think it's really, really, really interesting thing. And I highly recommend anybody watch it and watch how people change, especially watch certain people in that and how they change when, you know, they're given power, they're given uh, money and, you know, who they surround themselves with. I think it's very important as a uh, as you're growing up and stuff to make sure you surround yourself with the right type of people and to make sure that they are the, you know, like I said, the, the right kind of people. And when you watch that and you could see when certain types of people get around these certain people with money and power, they start changing. And um, it's real, I just find that, that, that documentary to be fascinating and uh, something that, um, let me see, let me jump up here. That, you know, when you, when you see companies, so they start out and they're like, yeah, we're going to change the world. And then uh, you, know, you realize what, what just what just happened? Like, you know, they had all these ideals about how they were going to do this and how everything's going to be open and free. And and then it kind of changes. And uh, I don't know, I find that interesting. And I think some companies that start out small and uh, then they get bigger and they lose a lot of that um, and of course, we're out of gray wool. What episode of uh, Scarland wouldn't be complete without uh, not having enough wool? So look at that. As you can see, that's kind of the design we're kind of going for. And I think that looks that looks really cool. So let me go get some more gray wool and we'll continue my thought. All right, welcome back. So I got a ton of gray wool and I completely forgot where I was uh, going with my conversation there about 3D printers and uh, a little documentary. That's the problem. I always try to like, you know, has something interesting to say, but then when you're counting and trying to build at the same time, you always lose track a little bit. But um, like I said, that uh, documentary on Netflix is fascinating about 3D printing and uh, the struggles of a startup and uh, 
how to try to kind of retain a startup's kind of, uh, you know, attitude, um, personality that got these companies where they are and they lose that and then they don't really create anything after that. So they kind of had that initial idea. They're all doing really great work. They're all going for it. And then, you know, they start getting more corporate. They start bringing in lots and lots and lots of people. They have fancy offices and then you don't really see anything from them anymore. And, uh, you know, you start seeing a lot less innovations, higher prices because, you know, they have so much overhead and different things like that. It's just interesting to watch how a startup goes from, you know, just a couple people in a, in a little uh, studio and then giant offices and a lot less innovation, a lot less, um, you know, you know, not a, not a bunch of friends anymore, where it's all just kind of this big corporate conglomerate. So I, don't know, I just found it very interesting. And there's certain companies that still are able to kind of retain that a little bit. And I point that to Pixar as they're a giant uh, studio with, I, oh man, last time when I was, when I got a little tour of Pixar, I think they had like 400 employees. Now they probably have around 800 or more. But um, that's one place that has kind of retained that little bit of a startup feel a little bit, you know, but um well, there we go, guys. Look at that. Oh, that is amazing. That bridge is beautiful. So there are a few more little touches we'll probably put on it here or there. But for the most part, we now have an amazing little uh, bridge here. Soon we'll be able to kind of connect the two bridges via tunnels. And um, what do you guys think? Do you like the detail on here? Is the uh, extra layer of dark chocolate below a right call, a right move? Should we add an extra layer of milk going on the bottom? Maybe a simple one layer of you know, half slabs going on the bottom. Just lots of little things we could think about as we go on. But um, yeah, for the most part, I think that is pretty good. And I really do hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, definitely let me know if you guys build something similar and um, send me a picture on uh, Twitter. And well, guys, this has been Good Times with Scar. And I always really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my videos. And if you believe that I deserve the rating, that would be much appreciated. And until next time, we'll see you later. And don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Twitter. It's nice to be back in Scarland. It's been quite some time. The last two weeks, we've uh, had the Modern House World download. And then last week, we had the Good Times of Scar texture pack was finally released. So hopefully you guys are enjoying those and getting some inspiration from the Modern House World or, you know, enjoying the look of these.